about time we begin our, our Wednesday night service. Thank you for being here, being part of our service. Uh, we have a good many of our young people are out tonight out at Hills Chapel for the Bible Trivia Contest. Uh, those that we know of that are sick, Peggy Roten was scheduled to be headed home from Birmingham after surgery. Uh, Billy Taylor is at home following surgery. We also need to remember Wanda Hoffman and Tracy Floyd Manners uh, as uh, they are going through some hard times with their health at this time, so please remember them. Paula Warner is on her way home from the hospital. And also Paula Warner is on her way home from the hospital in Tupelo. Uh, we have a group going to CYC this, uh, this Thursday, leaving at 2 o'clock. Uh, there's a packing list in the uh, foyer. If some of our young people are going to Horizons this year, you need to get uh, one of the forms in the back and have it filled out by March the 5th. Uh, you don't have to have a deposit with that at this time, so please get that filled out. Um, weekly food pantry item is mac and cheese. The pantry and clothes closet will be open on March the 9th and the 16th. So it's not open tomorrow, but it's March the 9th and 16th. There are several sign-up sheets with the Golden Circle in the back if you would uh, like to go on some of these trips. The next one is to Lloyd's Cafe next Monday morning. Uh, and then uh, there are several others out there. That's all of our announcements. Uh, please join in as Brandon comes to lead our singing. Uh, I forgot a couple of announcements. Uh, Vacation Bible School, if you have helped serve refreshments in the past, uh, they If you would, Mark, number 902. Number 902, this will be our invitation song. Have that mark turned to number 797. 797. Lord, we come.
Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this great day and bless you again us. Father, we're thankful for coming here to worship you tonight and help us stay focused on you, God, and so we can learn for all the things you've done for us. Please be with those who lost their loved ones. Please give them the comfort they need. Please be with sickness and help them get better. But please be with our all the veterans who are fighting for our country, defending us so we can enjoy the freedom we have. Father, we all make mistakes and fall short every day. And we just pray you forgive us when we do because we, we try our best to do what's right. We're thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, who made that sacrifice on that cross to save us from our sins. We're thankful for your awesomeness and your, and your, and your power. And please be with us tonight in your son's name. Amen. be reading tonight from the New King James Version, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Good evening. Pretty loud. My heart's racing a little bit. I can't tell if it's just I'm nervous or if I'm just excited to be able to have this opportunity to share a little lesson with you this evening. Have you ever just watched something and either thought to yourself or said out loud as your jaw just dropped, wow, that is just simply amazing? Maybe something like the Blue Angels performing their aviation acrobatics or during the Olympics, as a finger skating is a finger skater or an Olymp or a finger skater or a gymnast is performing for gold, or maybe some of you remember Michael Jordan playing basketball and how amazing that was, or maybe some of you have seen a, sp a space shuttle returning home. And what about technology today? You know, there was a time when people were amazed with things that we now take for granted, things that just don't seem like they're a big deal anymore. Maybe like automobiles or sometimes radios or stereos. And believe it or not, at one time, some people were amazed with eight track st stereos, excuse me. You see, the lifespan of something being considered amazing is often short lived. But there is something that is truly amazing. Something that we still see today after thousands of years that still amazes us today. And that something is faith in God, real faith in the true living God. We see this faith to lead people to accomplish some incredible things. I've seen it, and you've seen it. We have seen the, this faith empower people to endure, overcome, and achieve some of these amazing things. The Hebrew writer in the great chapter of faith, Hebrew, Hebrews 11, tells us some of the amazing things people did through their life with their faith in God. It tells us through faith that Abel, through his faith, put God first and gave him the very best offering that he could. It tells us that Noah, through faith, built an ark in the middle of a dry land where rain had never been experienced to save his family. It also tells us that Abraham, through faith, led his homeland, his people, and his family to follow God, even though he didn't know where he was going just yet. And it also tells us that Abraham, through faith, offered up his only son, Isaac, the child of promise, as a sacrifice to God. And through faith, Moses, when he was full grown, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And he chose, rather, to be mistreated along with the people of God. And by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down as they marched around that city for seven days. We see that faith can result in some amazing things. Someone just really giving God their best, like building that ark and leaving his family and all his homeland to follow God, even though he didn't know where he was going. Being willing to put God first, even sacrificing his own son 
and choosing God over material riches, power, and great fame. You know, to me, one of the most exciting things about God is that time and time again throughout the pages of Scripture, we see God using the ordinary to accomplish His will and get His work done. As Brother Lauderdale read a while ago, 1 Samuel verse, chapter 16, verse 7. We'll read it one more time. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And the Bible says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outer, outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We see that God looks at your heart. And when God looked at Moses' heart, he said, He will be my deliverer for my people. When he looked at David, he said, He shall be a king for me. When he looked at the woman at the well, he said, She will win the city for Jesus. And when he looked at Paul, he said, He will take the gospel throughout the world, even at the cost of his own life. God is a master of using the ordinary. He is an expert in turning these ordinary people into extraordinary people. Time and time again in Scripture, we see God's power manifested in the lives of someone who on the outside may not look that impressive, but on the inside has fully given their life to God, has fully surrendered their life to God. So what about you today? Have you completely surrendered your life to God? Tonight, we have an opportunity, one of the most amazing opportunities, to turn your life around. Tonight, if you have not had the opportunity to become a Christians, we have the water ready. We're ready to assist you. And if you have done this, we, we assist you in coming forward and taking that chance and turning your life around. If you need any me, if you need anything, please come as we stand and sing. you and a request from our brother Jackie Wilburn. Uh, Jackie says, I've made a mistake again. I've talked to God in prayer and asked for forgiveness, but I also want to ask you for forgiveness. He says, I love to worship and most of all just be able to be with you. I make mistakes by acting before I think. And he says, I know that's how a lot of lives get uh, messed up. He says, I want to ask for your support and you'll be amazed in the new me. So Jackie is asking that uh, as he has asked God for forgiveness, that we also uh, grant him that forgiveness and pray for him. And we want to honor his request at this time. Father, we thank you so much for forgiveness. We're thankful that you are a God that loves us and cares for us. And a God that 
is willing to accept us again when we mess up, when we admit our mistakes and come back to you. We're thankful for Jackie and his desire to get his life right. We pray, Father, you would forgive him of the mistakes that he's made and pray that you'll give him the strength going forward to be more faithful and obedient as he desires. Again, God, we're just thankful that you're a God that allows us to come home. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. As the teachers make their way to class, we'll sing one verse of number 881. Number 881. 